Well, hello there, guys. It is Cody Afro, and I'm finally back after quite a bit of a <laughs> quite a bit of time away. Uh, back from Scotland, back from London, back from everywhere. To be honest, I just feel like I've been driving everywhere around the damn flipping country uh, for these last few weeks. So um, a bit, bit knackered out, but I'm back, and I definitely want to be getting back and doing more videos. Uh, that's you know, I've been I've missed doing my videos and I really want to get back into it. Uh, today, actually, I'm doing something a little different that I actually don't do too too often. Actually, I don't do it at all on my channel. This isn't actually a live commentary. This is a pre-recorded uh, bit of gameplay because I thought I have so much to, uh, to actually say. Uh, I sometimes get distracted by just doing the stuff and doing the, uh, uh, the uh, actions and stuff within the actual gameplay of the train or whatever game I'm playing. I, I sometimes get sidetracked and then I lose what, I'm, uh, what I want to say. So I thought today I could actually do a little bit of just gameplay running in the background. I'll explain what it is in just a sec. Obviously we're on the Frankfurt U-Bahn. But I just wanted to take a video where I just, you know, I speak and I just talk about, like, my events in Scotland and uh, also some stuff about Age of Ultron because, you know, I'm a Marvel fan as well. So just just a bore of just kind of chill out time to talk to you guys. Uh, there is gameplay there, but it's not me actually doing it right now while I'm speaking. But, you know, we'll try it. Tell me what you think about it. But I just thought I'd rather just speak more than play and speak today. Uh, forgive me if you don't like that sort of way of doing things but uh, I will give it a try so uh, in the gameplay uh, as you know there is gameplay in the background gameplay is of the, the Frankfurt U-Bahn uh, from Just Trains and we're gonna be looking today at line U2 or U2 whatever way you say it and it goes from Gonsenheim to Sudbanhof. So Sudbanhof, I think that's how you say it. So it's actually quite a bit of a lengthy line. I think the next line, U3, is pretty much the longest line. So that's still to come. I'm obviously going to try and do all of these uh, lines from 1 to 9, with the exception of 5, because it isn't fully in the, in the, in the map. But I definitely want to uh, do all of these lines um, for, like as each video and they'll come out successful uh, uh, eventually and successfully uh, but uh, it won't be the one after the other but that'll be eventual uh, I thought today I could do YouTube while I am um, while I actually speak about my kind of time in Scotland and uh, uh, and also a little bit of Age of Ultron maybe we can get onto that if if I, if I finish my stories and my you know my talks and stuff like that I think here in the gameplay I actually took like a little bit of screenshots. So I kind of sometimes now tend to take screenshots for. Uh, <laughs> there it goes. Uh, I try to take some screenshots for my thumbnails, and uh, I think I do two of them in this. Normally I don't take screenshots within the gameplay, but sometimes I do. So it's a bit cheeky, but you know you can really see there where the actual screenshot comes um, uh, comes from. One thing you can also hear is that I got the, the bell thing to work, it's just by pressing and holding H that works, and I kind of use it actually quite a bit in this uh, bit of gameplay, I, I kind of use it every time I leave a station uh, where it passes a kind of junction where cars would cross over, so I, you know, I thought I'd just use it and uh, be a little authentic, I don't know if that's the actual real way of using it in real life, I just kind of used it in my own kind of, you know, quirky way or whatever. Anyway, before we even get into discussions, uh, the shoutouts for this video go to Aereo, Aereo, is this Aereo underscore Mitz? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta have to, I don't know if it's too, I don't know if the voice uh, announcement things are allowed, but I'll kind of try to pause when they play, but they're gonna play quite a lot because of literally after every single stop. But anyway, the shouts go to Aereo underscore Mitz. And I Sarge 56. That's again Ariel underscore Mitz and I Sarge 56. Their links and stuff will be down below. Give them, uh, give them much love. Those were the shoutouts. Also, I actually want to just could do a quick mention to my five lovely patrons. Uh, if you don't know, I already I have a Patreon account, which is something that's separate from YouTube, and it's for people that like want to go a little bit beyond to support me financially. Um, and it's the best kind of portal because they're like cool little rewards that you can or don't have to claim when you pledge a certain amount per month. And I would like to just take a, a moment to thank Peter Stokes, Zaphod, Dinoraptor, Simon, and Gamescube Elliot. 
wonderful patrons. Uh, Simon, Dinoraptor, and Gamescube have been now for I think two or three months. How long have uh, I've had uh, Patreon for? So thank you to all of them. Very special people. Uh, it's something like people ask me why I have a Patreon as well. It's to do with like because obviously I have my YouTube uh, income that I get and that goes in back into YouTube and stuff like that. And I would obviously eventually would want to do more giveaways and stuff, give out more DLC, give out more stuff. And I would love to use the YouTube money for that. And then it would be cool to just have somewhere where like you know dedicated Mr. fans could you know support me financially with just some extra income, which will be cool just for me. And thank you, lovely lady, saying all the lovely stations for me. So, uh, where have I been? I think that's the question that many people want to know. As uh, I left with, uh, I think, three, vid three videos came out within the time I was away, which though, I think they were alright videos. I think the Class 303 Armstrong Powerhouse Sound Pack, that was a really nice video to do. I really enjoyed it. And it was actually over an hour, which I tend not to do over an hour videos, but for that train, I actually genuinely liked it doing every single minute of it. It was just a great experience and a great sound pack overall. And then I did, uh, I started doing the missions on World of Subways 4, which is pretty cool. I definitely want to do more and uh, I, I, I actually am using this video like I did with, with the World of Subways 4 video. I'm using OBS to record it and it's not like I'm going to use, I, I think the difference with OBS and what I use like either with Fraps or DX Story is that the quality is a little bit down with using OBS but the consistency of FPS is much higher so even though sometimes in the game it might be a little bit low in FPS OBS still records at a higher FPS and makes the the video flow more in a better way, Ooh, I just knocked my pop filter there a little bit I will use OBS to record certain things that I think are FPS intensive, like I think World of Subways 4 I'm going to use OBS now, and maybe even this Frankfurt Oofbaum because it seems to record much smoother and it looks much smoother running back while I remember the first video I did of the Frankfurt Oofbaum just looked a little bit of a shambles and it, it, like for me when I was playing it was horrible but when I was using OBS it wasn't as intensive as like Fraps or DX Troy so I use OBS on some things and then I'll just stick to the normal kind of things which will make the video quality much better as it normally is. So where was I for two and whatever bit weeks? Well I was in Scotland and uh some people thought I was actually on holiday, which uh, is uh, fun because I've not been on a holiday since pretty, pretty much Christmas. I've had a little bit of an Easter break, but it, that even involves doing revision and stuff like that. I think my only holiday I have so far in, uh, in university was literally during the Christmas break. It was a month, but it was a month just like because it was at that time when I went back back home, it really did hit me that I've moved away to university and that was the first time I actually realised and kind of emotionally got caught up to the actual big step and stage in my life that I've actually moved out of home to go to university and then when I actually came back and you, like, I don't know if people have this kind of concept in their mind but it's such a weird concept of actually visiting your own home if that makes any sense and I still kind of find that a bit disturbing that you actually visit your own home like where your home's your home but once you're once you've gone out of your home and then you know you live somewhere else but then you visit your home it's like it should be the other way around you go and visit other places then you always return home but if you're now somewhere else and then you visit your home it kind of it kind of messed with me a bit and that was just like for that month and uh christmas it was just really nice to go back and that was probably my only kind of nice nice kind of uh, holiday off from university but then i still had to revise for exams during that period anyway but since then it's just been full pedal to the metal with loads of work. I've got all my work done for like coursework and stuff, but now it's literally just I have pretty much two weeks till my five exams start. I have five exams to do, so videos might not be as you know as uh, as common and as uh, you know at a higher frequency, but I will still try and keep doing live streams. Might be a little less, maybe once a week will be the kind of thing now until my exams are done but even then until my exams are done I still have things after to do with an independent field work project so it's not like it, it's a, it's a bit busy for me but I will always try and do videos that's my kind of aim uh, I'd rather sacrifice live streams than videos because videos are my kind of thing you know I'm a youtuber primarily now Scotland so I went for two weeks no not for two weeks for ten days almost two weeks 
I went to the Isle of Arran in Scotland between the 20th and the 30th of uh, April and that was for a field work an introduction uh, introduction to field uh, work and mapping and it was basically a trip uh, a assignment trip where we actually had to do essentially a whole module a whole university module and if you guys don't know what a module is in university for people that are not in university or people that didn't go to university um, it's essentially in a term you have different modules so in say like college or in school where you have a subject that runs throughout the whole year in university it's pretty much you have a subject that runs for a whole term which is a module and each module is um, built up of a number of credits that you can earn which you know eventually earns to your kind of like if you get a first a 2-1 or 2-2 or whatever comes after that uh, and how many credits you could accumulate over your time doing a degree or many degrees or whatever and this module was actually one module to do within 10 days being in Scotland so that's quite intensive if you think about it that's a whole term like most of these modules that we do and I do for my exams which are coming up in two weeks is a pretty much a term of like at least eight weeks you know doing lectures and stuff and you know revising for the whole kind of work and pro like that kind of process but we had 10 days to do a modules a, mo a module amount of work but obviously it's not, it's not going to be as intensive but it was intensive in some ways and so we got there and like by god beautiful beautiful Scotland I have never been to Scotland and it did not disappoint I drove that up all the way there I, like I kind of I think on my first day I kind of uh, I was in London but then I drove up to Leicester I stayed in Leicester for about two days so weiter fahrt in Richtung Gingheim mit der Linie U9. Bitte hier umsteigen. I stayed. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Buslinien 28 und 29. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Good. Um, I stayed in uh, Leicester for like two nights and then I drove up to around Stoke, Stafford or whatever it's called to pick up one of my course mates and then we drove the vigorous drive from pretty much around Stoke all along the M6 all the way up into Scotland and then continuing on the M6 equivalent of uh, in Scotland which I think is the A47 or something like that I'm not too sure 74 uh, and we drove up even more we didn't go into Glasgow we went underneath it and went through the country across to the coast to Ardrisson Harbour and then we popped onto a ferry, which was fun. I've never actually driven onto it. I've been on many ferries in my life, but I've never driven with my own car onto a ferry, and it was pretty fun. And uh, yeah, the ferry trip didn't last too long. It was about an hour, and then we are here on Arran, this actually quite nice little island that's not sandwiched, but it's kind of located within a bay. So it's not an island that's like open, in, like exposed to the open sea. It's only an island that's within a bay in in Scotland, in uh, it's it's Ayrshire, 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 A R Y Ayrshire, or something like that. I'm really bad with Scottish. I'm really bad with Scottish names. And literally going to literally going to Scotland and seeing all these different names, I was just like blown away. Like imagine me doing in train sim, <laughs> reading out all those station names when I was in Scotland. I was terrified because I was literally having to pronounce everything. To, you know, oh yeah, we're going there, we're going there. I think the weirdest town I passed on the motorway was something called Eccles Fracken, Eccles Fracken or whatever, me and my friend in the car were just making so much jokes about it because it just, <laughs> we're kind of like putting on our kind of goblin voices and just like, oh it's an Eccles Fracken or whatever and it was just, it was, uh, <laughs> it was funny, there was quite a lot of these weird names but that one was the like one that stood out for me and then when we got into England there was just a normal kind of Eccles field and it's just like, well, you know, <laughs> you have the Scottish Eccles Fracken and then you have English, Ecclesfield, it's just like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, but the Scottish names have always fascinated me and always interest me, so it's, uh, I, I, it, it fascinates me. So, uh, we got to Arran, and it is a pretty big island, I'm not going to lie, it is a pretty, I thought it was actually a relatively small island, I thought it would be, you know, moderate size, not something you could just walk around in an hour or something, I thought it would be moderate size, but not, it was actually a pretty huge island, that has quite a good amount of mountain peaks on it uh, it's pretty much the thinnest point is about 
12 miles in in diameter and then the rest is something like 20 30 miles in full length from its like longest point where you measure it and it was uh, it was good like the only kind of places we went like when I got on the island and drove through the island the roads on the island are amazing and so fun to drive on I had another friend that was driving there as well and we kind of we kind of foolishly played around <laughs> we kind of <coughs> we kind of foolishly played around driving wise through the island and we kind of imagined that we were like on some kind of rally cross which was kind of funny a little dangerous because there were it, it wasn't like the safest road or whatever but it was it was fun in our kind of eyes we enjoyed it and we and it was just a, a cool experience so we drove all the way across the island so the the the, the point where the ferry leaves is Brodick and then we drove all the way across the island to a place called Blackwater Front and that's where we actually stayed at, that's where our hotel was, and it was a really nice hotel. Uh, it literally sits on the edge on the coast, and I actually posted a picture on Instagram of when I got there, I was like, this was the view, that I was like outside my window, and I was like, whoa, like, I'm in Scotland, damn. And there's something about, like, when I went to Scotland, and when I was just, just every day when I was working there, I was just, I was looking at the, the, the horizons, and the kind of, like, you know, the skyline, and the, and the, just, 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 just everywhere around, and it just... I love being in an area, and I would love to live in an area which has... I'm going to have to stop for these announcements. They're, they're, they're just, every time I hear them in my ear when it comes up, it's just I feel like I shouldn't speed during them, but you know, whatever. But anyway, I was lo I'm looking around at the horizons and stuff, and I just, I love living, or I love staying in areas with high elevation. That's one thing I just kind of wish I had, and I wish I lived like in an area of like mountains or val like valleys and stuff like that because it's just it just makes the the top the topography like that just makes it feel different like when you live in an area like in London where it's really flat or even here where I'm in Leicester it's relatively flat maybe when you go a little bit more north to say somewhere like Sheffield it gets a bit hilly but it's it's not really you know it's still hilly, which it still makes it nice. But when I was in Scotland, I was like, I thought I was like in Croatia. I thought I was like somewhere in the Mediterranean. I love being in places where there's loads of high mountains and stuff like that. It's just, it's, I don't know. I feel like I'm in, in, in a different realm. I feel like I'm just, and by the sea as well. I love being by the sea. I, that's one place if I could, if I ever succeed in life, a lovely like beachside, not even beachside, but cliff, you know, something just near the sea would be my perfect ideal home looking over, uh, over the water looking at some mountains and stuff like that that would just be like something like Geneva Lake or something like that you know so that kind of thing but I love those kind of things and when I was there I was just it was just a great place to to work and kind of stay and that's why I kind of picked geology I just love the kind of things you get to do you get to go places you get to work in the most kind of beautiful, spectacular places, and that's your office. That's what a geology, a geology's office is like, and that's why I picked geology. I didn't really want to pick something where I'd just be, you know, going in nine to five into an office every day. I wanted to do something which. Nächste Station Hedenheim. Bahnsteigemöglichkeit zur Linie U1 in Richtung Gehenheim. I'm sorry, lady, who's announcing stuff. Zur Linie U3 in Richtung Oberursel Hoher Mark. Oder zur Linie U8 in Richtung We're actually passing somewhere actually here again. With a so wie zur Buslinie 60. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Yes, exit right, cool. Uh, we're actually passing like in the game right now through like even more AI and I think in the previous video when I passed this station and we're actually going along the same station as the pr stations as the pre previous video because most lines go to Subanov. I think the later lines like U4 U7 and stuff like that. They go different routes and stuff like that. So, but we'll get eventually to that. As I said, I want to do cover all these lines in videos in the future. So, where was I? Yeah, just talking about how I like the kind of mountainous and just areas with like really crazy topography and and talk about how like geology is just something I've always wanted to do and I'm really glad I picked it because it's just it's just great to work in these environments. <coughs> And I can't talk today because my throat, it's not my throat, but it's always, it's, I think it's my nose. Like, my hay fever has been so bad. And even when I went up to Scotland, I just took no medication with me. And I thought I'd be fine. And then I got up there and I was literally, uh, my nose was always blocked and always running. I was sneezing to hell. And literally every, t every day I woke up. 
my whole throat was blocked and my whole nose was blocked so I was literally just like just gasping for breath when I wake up and it's just something I hate living with and I take medication for hay fever but it doesn't work I literally have tried everything I've tried tablets I've tried nozzle sprays I've tried uh, eye drops I've tried loads of other things patches and stuff like that I've tried loads of stuff for hay fever but it all just doesn't work with me and I just hate it it's such an annoying allergy to have and if anyone else has it I, I, I know your feeling I know your pain but anyway so other than that we got there and uh, very nice hotel as I said it had a swimming pool in it, which I did, unfortunately didn't go into because I didn't really have much time. And also I didn't bring any kind of swimwear to go in. So I actually have been previously to Cyprus and I actually on the last day, even though I didn't have any swimwear and they had a swim pool, I just kind of, I think I borrowed one of my mate's swim trunks who he didn't want to go into the pool. And then I literally, no, they weren't swim trunks. I think I just wore my boxers and then some really loose short trousers or whatever and it was it was still fun because it was really hot but that doesn't matter so hotel really nice i was sharing a room with another guy uh, who uh wasn't the guy that I was traveling with he was just another guy on my course interesting guy he likes a lot of anime which you would think oh sam you love a lot of k-pop you should get on really well he likes anime he likes that kind of eastern uh you know style uh no he didn't he doesn't like k-pop I don't really like, I, I'm not saying I don't like anime, but I've never really been into it, and I've just can't, I don't have enough time to invest into anime. There's loads of animes I would love to watch, but I have loads of TV shows that I, well, loads of Western TV shows that I watch, and if I added anime to it, I pretty much would have full days of watching different things. I'm pretty much settled with watching most of the kind of Western stuff I watch anyway, uh, but even now, I can't. I don't even have much time for it because obviously I have exams and stuff coming up, so I've kind of lowered the tone with that. So. Right, so. Getting there, getting settled in, and then literally, we're literally thrown in. The next day, we came in the evening, so we like had, you know, the food, and the food. Uh, was really bad at the beginning because obviously I'm, a, I'm sort of a vegan but I'm a vegetarian and in Scotland it's literally unholy to be a vegetarian and even worse to be a vegan because they don't understand the concept and it's just it was a pain with food for the first few days but eventually it got better food but you know food could have been better but it was it was it was all right I, was, I won't complain but literally uh, next day we were into it going to like lo we like went to our main two areas that we covered was uh, Sanex Bay and Cory, uh, which are two parts of the island on the east side, the southeast, no, north, northwest side of the island, if we're looking just at the island or not the actual proper orientations, so it's on the northwest of the island. We also went to certain west, uh, no, northeast of the island, I'm getting my orientation, uh, orientations wrong, it's, it was mainly on the northeast part of the island, but we also went to some west parts of the island, I saw a huge great sill, which if you guys don't know what a sill is, um, it's sort of like a dike, and if you don't know what a dike is, it's just basically a, um, after this lovely lady tells us what the stop is. <laughs> Great, thank you. Now, uh, I saw a great sill, which is basically, essentially, it's a, it's a body of rock, it's a body of molt, uh, it's a body of dried uh, lava flow, and the difference between a sill and a dike is a, a dike is vertical, which can be tilted, and you have uh, cracks going with it. it, it doesn't crack the same way, like it doesn't fracture the same way a sill does. A sill is a block or like a lateral uh, spread and cooling off lava and it has vertical uh, fracturing cracks and cooling joints and you would be able to tell, like literally the cliff is pretty much all a sill and that's all a dried body of lava. And a dike can be just like a thin sheet going down into the ground or even elevating upwards. But you can have really complex stuff where you ha actually have a, a dike that's kind of like oriented in like a sill. But I won't get into too much technicals. But that's basically what I saw there on the west side of the island. 
We also saw like loads of. It, I saw loads of rocks and stuff like that, and it was it was great for me as a geological person. It was great. Like I saw said sed sedimentary rocks, uh, igneous intrusions of rocks, and I saw some metamorphics on the northwest side of the island where it was like crazy fabrication and foliation of the rock. And you probably right now sitting there saying, "What the hell are you talking about, Samuel?" But uh, if even if you have a slight note, if you know it slightly about rocks, you would know what I'm talking about. But I won't get into too much. But it was it was just great, and I really enjoyed it. It like my days kind of spent. We kind of got to an area, and we had the, we had a lecturer and a demonstrator. And a demonstrator is basically someone who's like a PhD student, and they come and help out with the lecturer, helping them out, giving just helping out basically in general. And they would both tell us what to do. They would show us these different rocks and for, uh, forms and stuff like that. We would have to interpret what we think is happening to the rocks we had to know like what's the successions of the rocks and we were basically split out around the coast which the best kind of areas to map are generally on the coast because most rock is exposed on the coast because you get the lovely ocean slash sea eroding it away for you, from you uh, for you and you, it gets nicely exposed while when you go inland that's where it gets a bit more tricky because you have loads of overburden and you know younger tertiary kind of rocks and if you don't know what tertiary is and I, I kind of feel that this is going to go into a bit of a semi-geology lesson so I don't really want it to kind of commentary where I'm just talking in geological terms and you guys are sitting there and don't, don't, not knowing what to do but I'm just all I'm going to say is we learned like different techniques and how to evaluate and interpret rocks and then obviously the whole mapping aspect and I, I know my way around the map, like I can read maps, like you know, grid references and stuff like that. I can work out bearings and stuff, so if, if I had a map and I knew I was on the map somewhere, I would be able to use reference points somewhere around about around me. About three normally does it, and you could actually use bearings and stuff and actually locate yourself pretty accurately on the map. And I actually read an article not too long ago that actually most of Britain does not know how to read and use a map anymore, which is kind of sad. <laughs> And I actually have to unclog my nose because I'm right now, my hay fever is actually so bad that I'm just kind of like, it's almost like I have a cold essentially, but it's worse than the cold because in the cold you can feel it and you can like understand that it's there, but hay fever you're like, you don't really feel it and you kind of, your head mind's like wondering why the hell is it there. So we did all those kind of things and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was, I, I normally when I go on field trips with schools and when I went, when I was in like secondary school or even college, when I went on trips, I never really... Uh, like normally don't you get when you go on trips that you, you kind of do a bit of the work but then you kind of relax and kind of go a little off the work and don't want to do it. This was kind of different. I literally went on it and went on it and every day from start when we started the work literally from start to finish I was focused and I didn't like you know hang around because easily it like the first four days was beautiful weather and I, I mean beautiful weather. It was like we were in the Mediterranean. It was excellent sunshine uh it was getting to thing like temperatures of 25 26 27 degrees it was literally nice sun bathing <laughs> temperatures and silly me i had i bought all my thermals and waterproofs along and i was like sitting you know, like and the thing with me is i don't really get too hot too much so i don't mind you know sitting in thermals and you know jackets and stuff while the sun's like blazing down on me and even sometimes when it's cold i'm not too bothered when it's too cold i'm kind of like my body reacts really well to like different temperatures and stuff like that yeah, we're, we're actually going now down into the tunnels in the gameplay which is cool good nice tunnel action gameplay <laughs> Anyway, continuing on, because, you know, I'm in story mode, as you know. Uh, the first four days, brilliant. Lovely weather. It was a joy to work in. It was just brilliant. Like, And we did quite a few things. We did, like, a thing called a sedimentary log, which is where you draw and record the succession of rock layers and bed bedding, as it's called. So you would have, like, a like a like a deposition layer where rock was deep uh, deposited and then another one and you would be able to see that with lines and stuff so like you know when you look at a sedimentary rock or like say a sandstone or something like that and you see different lines and like bedding in it that's what you can like draw a sedimentary log of and we learned that we learned how to basically map as well with how to mark on dips and strikes 
uh, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically what angle the bedding or layers of rock are actually dipping, because not every rock is straight. I'm sure everyone's walked around uh, some sort of cliff or a bit of exposed rock and it's all messy and all like orientated differently. You don't really find a lot of flat rock in the world. It's you get you know you get nice flat rock flat flat Holz bedding frames, but you don't get literally like on the ground flat rock because that's that's pretty rare. Most things have been folded and tilted, etc. So we learned all this stuff, and this was to like build up. We did some practice maps and stuff like that, and this was to like then eventually build up to actually for us to do our own independent map. Where one day we actually went with the demonstrators and they helped us a bit, and then one day we didn't. We actually went all around the areas around the island where we had to actually go and map, and we actually went to get all the measurements ourselves. We had to plot down all the measurements and stuff on our map, and we had to eventually. In the night time as well, in the night sessions, we had night sessions where we actually completed. So, the day lasted from about, we woke up at 7, had, um, oh, well, breakfast was at 7, or no, it was at 8. No, it was at 7. No, it was at 8. I can't even remember right now. So, the breakfast was at 8, so we wake up, woke up pretty much at 7, breakfast was at 8. The coach, which took us across the island to where we were working, left at 9. And we would work all the way from 9, come back about 5.30, have tea at about, at about, when would it be at tea? About 6.30. And then we would have a night session from about 7.45 to about 9 or 10. So that was a pretty long day. And if you notice, I call dinner tea. And this is something that I, I, I kind of now, I'm mixed between calling because I have so many people that I know here, so many course mates and like um, friends and stuff here now that call, they call lunch dinner and they call dinner tea. And I've kind of gone on with that, like it's fine, like I like using tea, I like drinking tea as well, so it's nice to say it more often during the day. I say, oh, what's your, what are you having for tea? But the one I kind of can't get used to, but I kind of got used to it while I was like, you know, with all these people that use it like that is when they're like oh let's have dinner now and then during the middle of the day it's just like what why are we having dinner so, oh yeah that's that's lunch <laughs> but yeah that's the kind of thing I, I don't know i think that's a northern kind of thing i think northerners use that kind of thing where lunch is dinner and dinner's tea and i kind of like it i had to it took me a bit of time to get used to it, but then i got into the flow of just using it because when everyone around you is saying dinner as lunch and tea is dinner you don't want to just be like the only one that's going, well, I'm going to have some for lunch. And they're like, what? What's lunch? Or like, I'm going to have dinner now. I don't know. It's tea time. <laughs> but anyway, that, that, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's one of those little kind of stories within there. So really long days. So essentially from 7 o'clock to 10 or 9 working pretty much with little, tiny little breaks for like, you know, dinner and tea and, you know, stuff like that. But really, really long days. We and we didn't get a day off. We didn't get even an afternoon. Well, we actually got an afternoon. Well, actually, technically, it was the last day. We got we went mapping from about in the morning to about twelve thirty, and then it uh, we got back and we just we thought we were going to have a break, but no, they were like, oh yeah, now you have to finish up all your work and give it in by six p.m. So it wasn't really a, like the only kind of bit we had off was after that. Well, actually we went to the to the pub bar and we kind of had a great time in the evening just playing darts and stuff poker and stuff and even each night we would play poker that was something we a little ritual we did after every kind of day of mapping in the field and you know doing stuff it was it was great fun like genuinely really great fun but as i said there was four days of good weather now after those four days well, the fifth and sixth day turned into just normal, kind of cloudy, bit of drizzle, nothing too much. Uh, it, it was, it was alright, it was typical Scottish weather, there was nothing too much, it was still alright to map in and still alright uh, right to do all the kind of things you would do out in the field. But, I think it was in the seventh or, you know, eighth, ninth day, and even the tenth day when we, like, the last part, it literally, I've never seen, literally, one of the days was literally like experiencing all four seasons of the year. The day started out 
sunny actually it started out really sunny we went out and this was the day where we actually went out for the first time by ourselves and had to do all the measurements and stuff and you know map taking all ourselves it started out really really sunny then it got really cloudy uh, then it got sunny and then it got rainy like real ugly rain not really heavy rain but not really light rain it was that kind of like in between rain like heavy drops kind of rain then it uh, became sunny again and then Nicht some more cloud again Hauptwache Zeit Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den S-Bahn Linien S1 bis S6 S8 und S9 sowie zu den U-Bahn Linien U6 und U7 Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts Right I just wanted to say so I can just fully So it went then back sunny and then cloudy and then sunny again and then a snow blizzard and I do not kid you, an actual snow blizzard. And I was, I was just like, you know, I don't mind all types of weather. I'm, I'm a really outdoor kind of person. When I'm outdoors, uh, people actually assume that I'm kind of like a city person because obviously I grew up in the city. Uh, people think that I'm a city person. I don't want to get my, you know, my feet wet or whatever, or get muddy or whatever. When, I, when I'm out about, I'm out and about. I go, I go hard. I had my, you know, I had my nice, you know, outdoor shoes and stuff like on. It was muddy as hell. I jump around in the mud. I fly through the the fields and stuff like that. I don't mind going out and getting dirty because, you know, once you're out there, you're out there. It's not like you can do anything about it. And there was quite a lot of people that me and some other friends like could observe and see who wouldn't be a field geologist, if you know what I mean. Like, there was a guy that didn't... There was a guy that bought just skinny jeans to the trip and he didn't bring any waterproof and when it was like raining really hard his jeans got like completely soaked and they couldn't dry and I'm just like why do you bring any waterproofs like, it's just a terrible idea like, just, just definitely just 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 terrible like we just we could realize who would be a field geologist who wouldn't who would do this kind of outdoor stuff again properly and who 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 could who could and whatever it was it was it was actually really funny to kind of like get this kind of perspective because you could see where some people are good in the classroom some people are good in classroom and outdoors and some are just really just good in the classroom and not outdoors and then you have some that are actually bad in the classroom and good outdoors so you get a quite good mix so snow blizzards they're fun it was actually pretty nice for, for some parts it was just really nice to sit back and just watch snow and 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 having the mountains with the dropbacks of the mountains, and the thing is, when you have cold kind of weather with rain near mountains, the mountains it just it snows up there. It's cold as it's really cold up there in high elevations. So when you go up, like I think it's every three meters a, a degree. Get I think it's I, I forgot what the rate uh, the oh what was it called again? Something elapsed rate or something like that. Every Thirty meters, is it? Or I think it's even less. It's like something like ten or five meters. It, uh, temperature goes down by a degree. So by the time you're up in a mountain, it's probably going to be something really close to zero, and that's where you get snow. And you can literally see snow building up on the peaks of the mountains, and it was just a beautiful sight to see. And but it wasn't. It was not a beautiful sight to 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 be working in, because it was windy. It was snowy, it was sleety, it was rainy, it was just too much. And I'm not the one to complain. I had a few friends that actually did just complain all the time. I just kind of got on with it, but I just felt that I couldn't do the best kind of work in those kind of conditions because it was just, it was just, it was just, it was just crazy. But other than that, overall, I thought the trip was just fantastic. I enjoyed it so much. I love that I got the contrast of good weather and bad weather because... We uh, in my whole class in university we were split into because I think there's about a hundred of us. It, it was we were split into fifty, and uh, fifty went for the first two weeks of April or whatever, and then we went in the twentieth to the thirtieth. They had all pretty much good weather, all sunny, nothing to worry about. We had half sunny. Half really bad, half snow, half rain, half everything you get. You get. It's like we can we might might as well have an, uh, a meteor shower thrown into thrown into that. I think we would have survived that. It's really good to actually get that experience of bad weather and good weather, not just good weather, because I feel that they're just gonna go out now when we do our independent field mapping projects in the summer. 
they're going to go out and they're going to, when it rains, they're going to cry or something like that. You know that, that kind of thing. Ende, bitte aussteigen. Umsteigemöglichkeit zu den Regional- und Fernzügen, zu den S-Bahnlinien S3 bis S6, zu den Straßenbahnlinien 14 und 16, zu den Buslinien 45, 47, 48, 61, sowie zu den Regionalbussen. Well, we're coming up now to the end of the line, which is Süd, uh, Südbahnhof. Uh, it, I had actually flown really quickly, and I enjoyed doing this. I just enjoyed just talking and not worrying about what the train's doing. Even though I do like doing that, and that's my kind of main thing of the channel, but it was just nice to just do a bit of story time, to be honest. Uh, normally, the scenario actually does a return trip, but I just tend to want to just do the whole line of one section. Maybe in the future, once I cover all of the lines, I might do a return kind of version or something like that. But we'll see. But generally, that was the whole kind of thing with Scotland. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we got back, and I swear the return journey with car was just... I literally did the whole journey from Scotland to London, and I was literally dead by the time I got back to London. I almost thought I was going to crash a few times in my car when I was on the last few junctions of the M1. But luckily I got back, and I do not advise driving when you're very, very tired, but I thought I could make it, and I did make it. But next time I won't. I will definitely not do that. So, um, overall, really good trip. And then when I came back, I stayed in Leicester for like a few hours and I drove back to London. So I had like a bit of a few hour break, but then literally I went back to London and that's why I couldn't make any videos when I came back from Scotland because I was in London, my computer was in Leicester. I just wanted to get back home really and stay home for a few days. And now I'm back in Leicester to revise and uh, have to sort out some stuff for my summer independent fieldwork project which we have decided my group we're going even more north to a pl to a place I think called Erebol which is literally at the edge the most northern edge of the UK you can get before you like get before the Faroe Islands and stuff like that uh, up there that's how far we're going and that's going to be a whole nother journey for itself I'm sorry I didn't actually speak too much about Age of Ultron maybe I might do that in another video but that's also something to talk about because I'm you know a very very strong Marvel fan but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my little discussion of Scotland and I hope you enjoyed the gameplay as well even though I wasn't doing it live but you know try it out and I want to I, I tried it out for today and I wanted to just talk to you guys really about my kind of time and my experience and I hope you've enjoyed my little chats and Rant, well not rants but you know what I mean shout outs again go to Ariel underscore mitts and isarge56 that's again Ariel underscore mitts and isarge56 I hope we get to do this again sometime I've been Quirky Afro I hope you guys have a lovely time and um, lovely day and, I and uh, I'll see you again in another video